Well, hello there everyone and welcome to a new video over here on Anton's Hardware Channel. Now, in my tiny collection of sound cards, I have several Xonar sound cards. You can see them in the back there. I have the Essence ST, I have the Xonar Phoebus, I have the Venerable Xonar AE, and I have the Xonar DX. And now I got myself, where is it? I got myself a new one and it's this one, it's the Xonar DGX. So how good is it? And how well is it against the other Ds? Let's find out in this video. So I got this one second hand and maybe for you who are looking at the picture right now, you can spot immediately what the problem is and it is a card for a small form factor. Now the guy that I bought it from second hand forgot to mention that he only has the SFF or small form factor bracket and he doesn't have the regular one present anymore. And well, he said, well, you have to send it back and... Uh, and I thought, well, okay, it wasn't that expensive. It's just 10 euros with shipping included. And I thought, well, what the heck, I just get it. But I wasn't too happy with it because now the card has to be all wobbly without this bracket inside my computer case and I couldn't touch it. And when plugging stuff in there, I had to turn it off the computer and turn it on again. So it was sort of a hassle to, uh, well, to test this card. But still, it's a new DGX card, a Xonar card. And there are so many uh, Xonar cards out there. I have to take a quick peek. There's the DX, which I have at the back there. You have the D1, the DSX, the DS, the DGX, and this one. Sorry, this is the DGX, and also you have the DG. Now, I did a video about this one, the DG, uh, DX, a couple of years ago, and I was wondering how good is it when you compare it to this one, because if you look at the, well, at first glance, they look identical to each other. And I thought, well, let's find out how good they are with each other. So on the surface of all these Xonar D cards, they all look very similar. They are the same format and well, they look rather identical to each other, but they have different target groups. Some are made for music. So the card includes Dolby Digital. Other cards are mainly focused at movies and they include DTS. Others are more at gaming and they include Dolby Headphone and some of them are PCI, some of them are PCI Express. So there is a difference between them. Now I want to focus today on these two. It's the D DX and the DGX. So there's just one, one small letter of a difference, but it's a huge difference when we look at the cards themselves. So what are the differences between these cards? Well, first the similarities. They both include Dolby Headphone. They both support the GX 2.5 gaming engine, which will add support for Creative's EAX audio extension on an ASUS card. But since EAX isn't used anymore, there is no point. The DX has 7.1 surround, whereas the DGX 5.1. The reported signal-to-noise ratio for the DX is supposed to have an impressive 116 decibels, whereas the DGX is just 105 decibels. The total harmonic distortion for the DX is again to supposed to have an impressive 0,00056% and the DGX 0,0025%. They both support 24 bits. But there's a difference in the resolution, uh, which is 192 kHz for the DX and 96 kHz for the DGX. These differences are mainly the result of the lesser audio processor used, on which I'll get back a bit later on. The frequency response is 10 Hz to 48 kHz, and this is what the card is able to produce and also get back on that when I showed you right mark audio results. The DGX has a front panel jack sense, which means that it senses when something is plugged into the front of your computer case. Nice feature, but the front panel also gives you a lot of distortion and this is why I never use it. The DGX has an headphone amp that can drive headphones up to 150 ohms. And last but not least, the DX needs a separate power supply and this time in the form of a mini Molex plug. 
The audio processor used in the DX is the AV100, which is just a C Media CM8788, but with an ASUS stamp on it. It is also used in the ASUS Xoner Essence ST and is a capable processor. There's a PCI to PCI Express converter in the form of a PLX PEX8112, which enables designers to migrate legacy PCI bus interfaces to PCI Express. The DGX uses the now discontinued CM8786 and is the lesser version of the one used in the DX. It isn't capable of generating anything up from 96 kHz. This time the PCI to PCI Express converter used is the AS Media ASM1083. Now there isn't really a problem with these converters, but the fact that there is the need for one tells us that the audio processors used are getting old. The digital to analog converter used in the DX is the CS4398 for the front and headphone. There's also another one present for the sides, center and rear in the form of the CS4362. The DGX uses the Sirius Logic CS4361 and they aren't excellent digital analog converters, but they suffice. The DGX has an, amp an onboard amplifier, uh, something the DX does not. And it is in the form of the Texas Instruments DRV601. Now the datasheet on the website of Texas Instruments states that it is capable of air everything up to 600 ohm, whereas the product sheet of the sound card only states that it is possible of 150 ohm. So on paper the DX is better. But what does Rightmark Audio Analyzer say? The stated 0,00056% total harmonic distortion for the DX and the 0,025% for the DGX as stated on the ASUS website couldn't be achieved. I only got a 0,055% for the DX and a 0,00858 for the DGX. I think that ASUS made an error with adding a zero too much and creating when creating the online content. Now both of them are excellent results by the way, nothing to be ashamed of, but if you look a bit more detailed, the DX has some more very good than the DGX. Now both of them have very good frequency response as the graph shows, but there is some distortion there. That's the wobbly bit between 3 kHz and well at the end of more than 40 kHz. What you want to see is a completely flat line from 0 Hz all the way up to 20, 22 kilohertz. There is some discussion on whether people uh, are able to hear from 20 kilohertz upwards. Some say no, others say that it isn't out audible, but it adds to the dynamic of a song. Uh, what is true, I don't know. There is also the issue of your headset not being able to drive such high notes. So even if your sound card is able to produce these sounds, your headset may not. And there's also the issue of your ears and getting older. Now we all know that the older you get, your listening will get worse and worse and worse. Now evolution has a great thing for us men in store and that's babies crying. Now the higher pitched sounds won't be picked up by men as easily as well for us to wake up and change a diaper, give a bottle or whatever. For women that's something different. They will tend to hear higher frequencies a bit better than us men. So they will wake up and will have to change a diaper or feed the baby. So there's not really a point in getting anything higher than 20 kilohertz, even though there may be something there. And that is also why I choose this as a cutoff point when, well, evaluating the frequency response. Anything above 20 kilohertz is a nice bonus, but you really don't need it. Sound card manufacturers, by the way, also use this 20 kilohertz cutoff point. And that's why you see that a lot of especially cheaper sound cards have this cutoff point at 20 kilohertz. Now I was intending to show you both of the driver interfaces, but I found that this just wasn't interesting. 
The recording that I'm showing right here is the one that I made for the DX a couple of years ago. And this is a very dated interface and it looks like it's right out of the 90s. It's rather non-descriptive and it's very hard to tell what the, pur the purpose is of certain buttons. It is an incredibly bad interface. Now, if I had two sound cards in front of me, the DGX and uh, this one, the DX, which one should I choose? Now, I would also go always go for this one, the DX. Why? Well, this one is definitely a of a lesser quality, and this one is just a bit better. Now, both cards aren't great. I wouldn't choose them at all if I well, if I had an option for another sound card. Uh, the driver interface is getting really old. It looks like it's stuck back in the 90s. It's User experience wasn't a big thing then, and there were strange buttons, and you didn't don't know how to use it really. That's a real issue. Also, the fact that both cards are uh, essentially PCI-based cards shows that the audio pressure processor is getting dated. It's almost a legacy processor on both of them. And that's also what shows when you have those listening sessions. It isn't just, it isn't up to today's standards. 10, 20 years ago, these must have been great cards. Don't get me wrong. If you have one of these cards and you think they're excellent, I'm not saying that they are horrible cards, that the sound quality is terrible. No, they aren't. They're just not up to today's standards. So if you have 15, 20, 30, maybe 40 euros laying around and you come across a Xoner AE, card get that one it's way 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 better and you should definitely get that one that's it for me for today i hope you enjoyed this video and i hope to see you soon in the next one see you then bye bye